Scientology is the world's newest major religion, and even though it's the newest one, it has just as much controversy as the ancient ones. L. Ron Hubbard was a renowned science fiction author and a practice hypnotist before he wrote the Scientologist religious text, Dianetics. The beliefs of Scientology are as follows. Inside the human body is an immortal soul-like being called a Thetan. They believe in a godlike figure called the Supreme Being, and believe that there are eight dynamics which drive us forward. These dynamics include urge to infinity, or urge to find a higher power, urge to protect animal life, urge to exist as a peaceful community, community and urge to exist across all borders as one mankind. I was surprised that these beliefs actually seem pretty tame as far as religion goes. But keep in mind, the church is purposefully picking and choosing what information the public sees. We're at the tip of the iceberg right now, and this rabbit hole gets darker the deeper it goes. To become a member of the Church of Scientology, you must first go through a process that happens very often in the church called auditing. We'll talk about this in a second. Scientology claims that this process can clear you of traumatic memories. Once you're cleared, you can progress to the level of operating thetans. They claim that an operating thetan can leave the body, manipulate objects, and control the world around them. The secrets to the universe don't come cheap, though. You gotta pay to advance in the church, and the lowest level progression you can pay for is $2,750. Most of Scientology's beliefs are classified until you get up into the higher levels, and members reaching the third level of operating thetan have to sign confidentiality agreements to progress to it. L. Ron Hubbard apparently had this profound realization after he founded the church. He claims that he realized long ago an alien named Xenu was the dictator of the Galactic Confederacy. He brought beings to Earth and dropped them into volcanoes, releasing their Thetans into the environment. These Thetans then attached to humans. The Thetans were angry about being murdered, and their trauma negatively affects us. He says if you can completely get over this primordial pain, you'll be able to proceed to the third level, but it's dangerous because apparently trying can lead to mental illnesses. The total amount of auditing sessions you will have to pay for to advance to this level is $100,000, and if you don't have the realization, you have to pay the same price to try again. The church is actually not too fond of people saying all this, but thanks to South Park for biting the bullet and making this information incredibly popular. Now so far, all this info on Scientology might make it seem a little goofy, and maybe like a weird use of a lot of money, but do you remember how we talked earlier about a process called auditing? Auditing is a process where the potential member, or the pre-clear, is asked questions to rid him of engrams, or traumatic memories in your reactive mind. This process is similar to psychoanalysis, and many people claim that it uses a form of command hypnosis by repeating certain questions and using patterns of repetition to get the pre-clear in a suggestible state. While Scientology denies that it uses any of these practices, it doesn't help their case that L. Ron Hubbard studied hypnosis. Also, that's exactly what someone using hypnosis like this would say. You can do more than one thing with hypnosis. Not only is it useful for hypnotherapy, but also you could make someone pay you $100,000 for a story about an alien. There's also something in Scientology recruitment called a stress test, in which one holds on to metal cylinders that are hooked up to a machine, and answers questions about stressful things in their lives. The needle apparently moves when it senses the individual stress, but I'm not sure if you can scientifically measure the source of someone's stress like that. I may be wrong, and I'm sorry if I start to alienate the Scientologist section of my audience, but some of these trials seem like a way to get people to lower their guard and exploit their fears and anxieties in order to make them more vulnerable to suggestion. I'm about to put my money where my mouth is and take a test created by Scientology called the Oxford Capacity Analysis. Now, this test has no affiliation with Oxford or any other accredited university. So, it, you, you know, that's that's ballsy. Hello, Az, and welcome to the Oxford Capacity Analysis. Please read these simple instructions, make sure you understand each question. If you ask a question, give your answer right now, you're ready for test. Do you make thoughtless remarks or accusations that you later regret? Uh, maybe. I don't know. When asked to make a decision, would you be swayed by your like or dislike of the personality involved. It depends who it is. Do you get occasional twitches of your muscles when there's no logical reason for it? Yeah. Are your actions considered unpredictable by other people? Yep. Would the idea of inflicting pain on game, small animals, or fish prevent you from hunting or fishing? It's circle of life. Oh fuck, no, that is wrong. Is your life a constant struggle for survival? That's an intense line of questioning. This is a long ass test. Jesus. Do you you consider there are other people who are definitely unfriendly towards you and work against you? Oh, yeah, there are people that hate me. Do you have any particular hate or fear? Are you asking me if I have a fear? Like, do you have one fear? 
Are you afraid of things? If you have fear, if you've ever been afraid of something, you need to join Scientology. Yeah, I'm afraid of things. What? Do you consider the good of all concerned rather than your own personal advantages? I consider it. I still might not do it. When hearing a lecturer, do you sometimes experience the idea that the speaker is referring entirely to you? Are you asking if I'm self-absorbed? Do you ever get a dream-like feeling towards life? when it all seems unreal. Are you asking me if I take drugs? Are you perturbed at the idea of loss of dignity? I made a cartoon about animals having sex. No. If you were invading another country, that took a step. Would you feel sympathetic towards conscientious objectors in this country? Are you gonna make me invade another country? Are you prejudiced in favor for your own school, team, college, club, and team ec- Uh, Cult of AZFK is the best, but, so, no, cause that's just fact. But would you use corporal punishment on a child- Would you use corporal punishment on a child aged 10 if they refuse- if it refused to obey you? Is this my child? Or is it just a child? Did I just find a kid and it refused to get into my van? Do you use corporal punishment? No! Is your facial expression varied rather than set? Can't you tell? A definite effort on your path to consider the subject of si Bad Scientology. No, I feel like the way they're phrasing these questions, they're trying to make me get it. So whether or not I say yes or no, they're gonna be like, oh, he thought about it. But if I say yes, then they're gonna say, oh, you already know that, which means you've gone and thought about it. And if I say no, they're gonna be like, oh, it wouldn't take that much effort. So you'd obviously do it. And if I say maybe, then it's just both. So it doesn't fucking matter. They're gonna give me the same answer that I'm sick anyway. So I'm gonna say maybe. Do you ever get disturbed by the noise of a, the wind or a house settling down. They're trying to see if they can sneak up on me. Yeah, sometimes. Are you in favor of color bar and class distinction? What the fuck is that? Is this asking me if I'm racist? Or do you frequently dwell on your past illnesses or painful experiences? Do you have little regret on past misfortunes and failure? Does the idea of fear or apprehension give you a physical reaction? See, this is what I was talking about, by the way. They're repeating these questions a lot and they're trying to make me fixate on certain questions by bringing them up with different wording. Uh, this is, I believe, over 200 questions long, and they have repeated the same question with different wordings quite a few times. I don't know how much you're gonna see when I edit this down, but this is a long test, and they've repeated things a lot with some strange questions and things that caught me off guard, and it kind of seems like they set it up that way on purpose. Do you consider that you have many warm friends? Yes. Processing answers. Oh, let's see, Church of Scientology, what is wrong with me? Okay, so I got a good score on activity, appreciation, and aggressiveness. Throughout the test, themes that kept coming up were past regret, mental health issues, the opinions of others, and things that induce anxiety. I could definitely sense that they were trying to get me to fixate on certain topics by asking the same question in multiple ways. Repetition was very common, and I felt like it was attempting to sneakily suggest ideas to me. The questions were were very vague in a way that whether you answered yes or no, they could turn it into a problematic statement. Don't just take my word for it. You can take this test yourself by googling the Oxford Capacity Analysis. All that stuff is pretty shady on its own, but not necessarily dark, right? Even though there's no proof, David Miscavige, the man that took over for L. Ron Hubbard when he died, has had multiple claims of violence and various forms of abuse inflicted upon the church members, but nothing has ever been substantiated. If stuff like this is going on, why do so few former members of the church speak up? Remember how I said in every session of auditing you talk about things that either you did or happened to you in the past that you don't particularly enjoy remembering? If you have participated enough in the church's activities to see deeper levels of Scientology, chances are you've told the church quite a few things that you wouldn't want anyone else to hear. The church keeps extensive records of every single auditing session, and it would be really easy to blackmail someone into compliance with all that information. Hey, it's been a fun couple years, but uh, I'd like to leave the Church of Scientology now. Awesome, now I can tweet about what you bought on the deep web. Okay, I'll be good. Big thanks to r slash beefy jerk for all the support since I found them early on in my channel, and also their member, u slash iceberg with numbers instead of vowels for the dope fan art.
part. If you enjoy discussing topics such as encountering someone who's rollerblading off methamphetamine in a Walmart parking lot, then r slash beefy jerk is the place for you. Also, as I previously mentioned, we're going to be doing a small giveaway. I plan to do a bigger one in the future, but the first one is to partially test out the logistics of running one of these while I still have a smaller audience. For the first giveaway, I'm going to be giving away the trademark AZFK mask so you can wear your cult membership on your sleeve and protect yourself from all the infected non-believer plebs. You can enter by first subscribing and commenting AZFK for president 2020 on this video. The winner will be announced one month from the day this is uploaded. Also, a small puzzle I've set up throughout the videos is getting more and more pieces. There isn't enough info to figure it out yet, but keep on the lookout for consistent symbols throughout the channel. If you figure it out, it could lead to an even better prize. Yeah, anyway, so that's what's gonna be going on in the channel if the Scientologists don't try anything. Who the fuck are you guys? Everything I said previously was incorrect, and Scientology is the newest revolution in both spirituality and science. Like seven at the bell, and I will see you all when we transcend our bodies as operating thetans. Okay, bye.